UFC 298 Volkanovski versus Tapiria takes place this weekend, and I'm going to go through the full card breakdown and in detail prediction, starting with the early prelim opener of Andrea Lee versus Miranda Maverick. Great fight to open up this card. Actually, not bad. Not a bad fight here. It's actually two decent strikers that will strike as it's opening up the card. At least this is on the main card of the pay-per-view. Um... Or even on the headliner of the prelims, because that would be an embarrassment. But these are actually two decent fighters in Andrea Lee and Ma- Miranda Maverick. I'm going to lean Miranda Maverick's way here, though. This is a close fight. Andrea Lee is capable, and she is pretty good in her own right, but she has faced very tough competition. Like, Macy Barber is no slouch. Natalia Silva, that could be a future champ right there. And Viviani Arawaho. That's not... Well, Arawaho's still good, but still, she did just kind of just get out-muscled in that fight. I'm going to go for Maverick, though. I think she's got more ways to win this fight. I think she can strike with Andrea Lee if she needs to. I think she can do that, but I think her grappling game is going to get her the win here. She looked great against Priscilla Cacoera, which isn't great, but still. She won the fight, clearly. Dominated the first two rounds. Finished it off in the third with an arm bar. And she just looked more impressive than Andrea Lee at this point. And Andrea Lee, she arguably could have beaten Macy Barber, I get it, but if we're going to score that based off damage, Barber did win that fight, and I don't really mind the decision there. So, yeah. But if we're going to complain about Barber getting robbery decisions, Mara Maverick got robbed against Macy Barber. And yeah, so I'm going to pick her to win. She did lose to Jesu uh, Vicious, but she had an eye injury in that fight. In that fight. I'm going to go Maverick by decision win 29-28. We move on up the card. Val Woodburn versus Oban Elliott. I'm going to pick Val Woodburn. No. He's got a good shot here, though. Don't count this guy out because he looks like a guy that can improve his skills quickly. You know, he got killed by Bo Nickel. Who cares? I know people are going to make fun of him because he got knocked out by the rookie Bo Nickel, but he took down three days' notice on International Fight Week. Main card opener. It's, it's from fighting... From, oh, I'm going to train for this Contender Series fight to, oh, I'm fighting Bo Nickel, the hype train, on the main card of a pay-per-view at International Fight Week, biggest card of the year. It's, it hits different like that on three days' notice. I'm going to obviously go... I'm going to go with Oban Elliott because I think he is better than Val Woodburn as far as we know. But Val Woodburn, I can see this guy improving quick because he can. It's just I think in that bone he fight, he was like, oh, fuck, the takedown's probably going to come. The takedown's going to come. Oh, I got clipped on the feet. Oh, shit, I'm hurt now on the feet. What do I do? Oh, I'm down and out. You know, that's probably what he was thinking. You know, and he was just hesitant to throw, like, an uppercut or something or time something. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Oban Elliott, though. He's just more impressive, in my opinion. He's more impressive than Val Woodburn, in my opinion. He just is. He's on a winning streak. He's good at striking. I don't think I'll grapple Woodburn here, but he can just pick. I think he can chain wrestle Woodburn. I think Nickel would have done that if the KO didn't happen. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go Oban Elliott. I think he's more impressive. Can be cracked, but he's improved. He's on a winning streak. He's not inconsistent. He is consistent at winning. And I think he'll go out there and win a boring decision. Maybe Woodburn gets him late. Like a good third round for Woodburn. But I'm going to go Elliott. We move on up the card. Why am, I, why am I talking about these fights so long? Josh Quinlan versus Danny Barlow. I'm going to go with Danny Barlow. But again, Quinlan, he has that KO ability to where it's just a fluke can happen. KO Jason Witt, though. I don't like Jason Witt. I think he's, I don't think he's got a good chin. Danny Barlow is good. Why am I on Amanda Lemos's page? Fuck off, Lemos. Um, Danny Barlow's good, though, man. He is good. So it's like Yasaku Kinoshita, which would have been an easy win for him, in my personal opinion. I mean, who's, can he, who's Kinoshita beating? He's lost a bit, yeah. Billy Goff, Adam Fujit. But yeah, that would have been easy for him. But pick out Raheem Forrest. He's got KO power. 
I just think he'll just be better than Quinlan in the pocket, more skilled, better trend as far as we know, more power, arguably. Maybe Quinlan can match that with the power and shit, but I just, he looked terrible against Trey Waters. Didn't look good at all. He kind of just was, like, accepted defeat while he couldn't get the KO in or just find the shot on the chin of Trey Waters. I'm going to go for Danny Barlow. I think he's just better than Josh Quinlan. We move on. Up the card. Ming Yang. And if, if anyone's going to grapple, I'll trust it to be Barlow. Looks more... He looks better, in my opinion. We move on up the card. Ming Yang Jang versus Brendison. Or Brenson. Brendison. That's just, that sounds way better than Brenson. Brendison Ribeiro. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go for Ming Yang Zhang over Bren- Brendis and Ribeiro. I like Ming Yang Zhang. Ah, he's a can crushing bitch, though. See, this is one of these fights where it's just like, I know the other picks on this card. It's just, well, yeah. There's some picks on this card, but we'll move on. Top to- we'll move to them. But there are some fights on this card, which is tough to pick. But this is one of them. I want to pick Ming Yang Zhang. It's just... Why do I... Uh, Brenson Ribeiro. Supposed to fight back in November. December, sorry. <coughs> He's beating cans. Bruno Lopez was a, sle- a slick win, though. Uh, There's going to be one of these ones where I'm just like, I should have picked this guy to win. My throat is so dry right now. I'm going to go with, does Ming Yang Zhang get KOs in the first round? He does. I'm going to go Ming Yang Zhang. I think he's just going to be too much for Brendis and Ribeiro. And Ribeiro has, he can't be in good competition. That Lopez guy in his last fight, good win. Um, but yeah, he's good though. Um, Ming Yang Zhang's good. He's known about this for more longer now. He's known about this UFC debut since last year. Like, actually last year against Volkanovski. Um, so, yeah. He was supposed to fight Volkanovski. Not Volkanovski. On the Volkanovski Makashev one card, I was going to say, against Tyson Pedro. Wasn't going to fight... Vol- what the fuck am I saying? He's going to fight Volkanovski. Jesus. He was supposed to fight on the Volkanovski Makashev one card, which was a while ago now. So, yeah, I'm going to go with... Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Ving Yang Zhang getting a KO in the first round because Rubio has been shinned in the first round before. We move on. Up the card. Rania Nakamura versus Carlos Vera. Easy one to predict here. I'm obviously going to go for Rania Nakamura. He's improving, man. And if he... This is what I think Nakamura needs to do. I think he wins regardless here. I'm going to just break down the matchup. I'm going to see what he can do in his career after this. Um, I think he's just better than Carlos Vera. Carlos Vera, again, like Fernie Garcia himself, the GOAT Fernie Garcia, just doesn't bring anything to the table. You know? Just doesn't bring anything to the table. You know? No KO power. I mean, Carlos Vera... You know, he has no KO power. He's also Brad Katona. He's got guillotines. I'm sure Nakamura can figure him out there of defending those guillotines. He's got no grappling game, really, in terms of offense and defense. No KO power on the feet. So he's just a scrapper from, where is he from, Ecuador. So he's going to have that Marlon Vera sickness to him. And Nakamura's sick. Nakamura is sick, more sicker, better at striking, can get the KO if he needs to, and if he doesn't get the KO, he can resort to grappling, and I think he should improve on his BJJ. He's got good wrestling, he's strong as fuck, but get the BJJ going, you can get more subs like that. He didn't really get the sub the last fight against Fernie Garcia, although he won that clear, easy dominant performance, add the BJJ in your game, your stand up's sick already. No need to improve it. Maybe improve more the patient area of your stand-up, but 
I think his ground game, he needs to add more subs, like Dars Chokes. Like, he will be a fucking champion of the world one day if he does that. But these are cans. He'll beat Carlos Ferrer and smash him. We move on up the guard. Marcos Rogerio de Lima versus Justin Taffa. I'm going to go with... Hmm. I don't mind de Lima. But Taffa's got momentum. That's the difference maker, in my opinion. He's got momentum on his side. Look great against Austin Lane, and I doubted him there as well. Doubted him in the first fight against Lane as well. I doubted him twice against Lane. Proved me wrong once, and only once, because the first fight was not even anything. Um, no, I think I picked off in the first fight against Lane. But Lane was looking decent early, that's why I picked him in the rematch. Who cares, though? He's won the rematch, ended that uh, story against Lane. But he also came with Parker Porter, and I've been doubting Tafa for a while now. I'm going to pick him over Delima. I think Delima's good. Solid grappling game. I don't think he'll outgrapple Tafa. To be honest with you, I think Tafa's too big. He's like a Tui Vasa, Mark Hunt type fight. He's like a Mark Hunt, to be honest with you. KO power, good takedown defense, can grit down. Um, but yeah, I think he'll beat Delima. Delima got KO'd by Derek Lewis. In a way where it's like uh, 900 out of 100 times, it doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, he lost that one. I don't think Delima wins. I don't trust his chin here. If they're going to scrap in the pocket, Delima can. He has brutal KO power. So, Tafa needs to watch out, but I'm going to trust Tafa in the scrappy war to where he wins it majority of the time. And I think he wins it by KO first round. We move on up the guards. Amanda Lemos versus Mackenzie Dern. I'm going to go with... Why do I worry a Lemos will lose to Dern? I'm going to pick Amanda Lemos. No. I actually really worry Lemos will lose this one to Dern. I know Dern looked pathetic against Andrade. But this is one where I'm like... You know what? Dern can actually win this, I think. This is one where I think Dern actually could win. Ugh, she's so bad on the feet, though. Lemos did lose to Zhang Wei Li, but she gave her problems. That's the thing. She gave her problems at moments. But she did get out-wrestled and just muscled around. And I think with Lemos, is, I don't think she'll quit. She does have heart. She, I don't, like, when she loses, she's not going to quit. Same goes for Dern. Why do I sense a Dern upset? Even if she's an underdog. I think she is. Let's be real. Let's just say she's an, an underdog here. I mean, is she? She's a... Uh, even. So, yes, she is an underdog. Slight underdog. Oh, uh, I kind of feel like Dern wins, to be honest with you. Why do I feel that way? I'm going to go Lemos. I think Lemos wins. But I am a little bit worried for this one. Because I feel like this is one where I'm like... I should have trusted my, my gut. Oh, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. This is one of these fights. One of these pathetic, dumb fights. Lemos got grappled by Zhang Wei Li. Uh, I'm going to go... I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Lemos, though. I think she'll KO. I can't do on the feet early. Because Darren couldn't finish Angela Hill on the ground. And Hill does have a weakness down there. And she looked decent against Zhang. There's no way Darren does better against Lemos than Zhang Wei Li, for fuck's sakes. So yeah, this might be one I regret. But I'm going to go Lemos. I think she'll get the job done. Plus, Darren's taking out a short notice for Suarez. We move on. Up the card. Speaking of short notice. Anthony Hernandez versus Roman Kopulov. I'm going to go with... Anthony Hernandez over Roman Kopulov. I just think this will be the end of Roman Kopulov. I think. We'll get to the main event in a second. Um, I like Roman Kopulov, but man, even taking this on short notice is worse bad for him. In terms of cardio training, he was fighting Josh Frem. Well, he was supposed to fight Hernandez, and then Frem stepped in. So they're rebooking this one again, but Kopilov's stepping in again. 
I don't like this for him, man. I really don't. I like Kopulov striking. But does he put away Hernandez in the first round easily? That's the question. I don't think he does. Kopulov doesn't have insane power in his hands. It's more the combos he puts in. To where it's like, oh shit, I'm getting hit with combos. He doesn't have insane power where you're going to get fucking sparked out cold. Pull away Ribeiro, good shit. With a head kick, though, perfect head kick. Put away Ribeiro. Um, who isn't great? Who isn't Anthony Hernandez? And then Josh Friend. It was just like, wow, you beat Josh Friend by body shot TKO. Where it was a competitive fight against Josh Friend. You know? And Hernandez has struggled against Fremd as well. I get it. But, I don't know. I think Hernandez is going to win. I think his pace will be too much for, for uh, Kopilov. I think he's just going to be too much for Roman Kopilov. And just out-muscle him. Hernan- Kopilov lost to Duraev. Looked good, but lost that fight. And he loses to, gra- loses to guys like Carl Roberson. He can improve. And probably has. And... He definitely has improved. But I'm not going to trust that against a guy like Hernandez. I'm going to go for... I'm going to go for Anthony Hernandez winning this one. Kopilov's good. But as it goes on, Hernandez will start to take over. He was supposed to fight Ikram or Liskarov, So you know he was been training for a striker. You know, and a heavy wrestler where he could just wrestle on. I got Hernandez winning this, though, to be honest with you. I think he does win it by it. A tough decision loss. Kopilov loses, but survives. We move on up the card. Hernandez broke Marc-Andre Berry out. That's impressive. Shabazzian, who cares? Shabazzian gasses. But Berry out. He broke Berry out. We move on up the card. Marab de Velashvili versus Henry Cejudo. Above... Why is it below Ian Gary? This is the title eliminator. Whoever wins this faces Sean O'Malley or Marlon Vera. I think O'Malley wins pretty easily, though. But still, this is a title eliminator. Whoever wins gets a title shot. I'm going to go for Marab de Velashvili over Henry Cejudo. If this was before, if this was Cejudo coming back, all right, if this was Cejudo coming back, but just coming back to this fight, who cares about the Sterling fight? He just came back to win this one. Uh, or he came back to this fight in his comeback. I would have been uncertain. But seeing Sterling out-wrestle Cejudo at moments and take him down, Sterling doesn't really take people down. TJ hurt his arm, who cares, whatever. You know? I'm going to go for... I'm, Sterling out wrestled him, and I wonder what Marab and Aljo do in spars. And Aljo will give a few tips to Marab in this fight. I don't think Cejudo knocks him out. If you're not going to KO Aljamain Sterling, who I think's got a bit of a worse chin, just chin wise, to Marab de Velashvili, Sterling's got more of like a pencil head. Like a flat pencil head. Like an eraser, but like, thi- like a thin eraser. You know? It's where Marab has more of a blocky head, Rubik's Cube head. You know? And Marab can be clipped. Cejudo ain't meant to... Who has Cejudo KO'd? Dillashaw? Good win. Behind the ear. Perfect shot behind the ear. I doubt that happens to Marab. I think Marab's going to have to get actually chinned in order to go down. I'm not going to... Marab took shots off Yan. Yan. Aldo. I'm sure that if he takes shots off those guys who hit a lot harder than the flyweight, former flyweight Cejudo, I'm sure he can eat it from Cejudo as well. Did get rocked by Marais, but Marais... I, I don't know actually what to say about that, but still he survived against Marais. Same with Cejudo. And uh, I think Cejudo's going to lose a frustrating, boring-ass fucking decision. A classic Marab performance. And he wins it 30-27, 29-28. Cejudo has a decent first round. I just don't see him winning this. I don't think he'll poke Marab at range. He could. Just style on Marab. But he fought Yan. That was the test. Can he survive Yan with power? The skill at range? And he fucking won that 
Same goes for Jose Aldo. I'm going to go for Marab. I think he gets it done. And then faces O'Malley next or whoever's champ. We move on at the card. Jeff Neal versus Ian Gary. I'm going to go with... Fuck! I want Neil to win, and I'm, I'm not going to be biased here. I think Neil can win this. I think he can get this done, to be honest with you. And I'm going to go with Jeff Neil. I think he can get this done. Not just because I don't like Ian Gary. I think he legitimately can win this. I think he can legitimately win this. <coughs> I actually think so. I think he's got... I think he's good, Jeff Neal, and I don't, I don't think Gary. I think there's eventually going to be a time where Gary gets caught, and I think this is going to be it. I think this is going to be it. Jeff Neal's so good at catching people. He catches people for a living. Ian Gary makes mistakes by leaving his chin open and his head up. He does it all the time. Against Magni, fuck who cares. Magni's a fucking punching bag, unless you're Mike fucking Malott and... You somehow lose to him. How is Magni in the rankings? I don't understand it. He's such a beatable fuck. Not in that way. In the fighting way. He's a beatable fuck. Anyways. He won against Magni. Jeff Neal has a million times more power than Magni. He's not as rangy, but he can deal with like it well, Jeff Neal. You alright? He's got better takedown defense than Neil Magni. Just the only part of Jeff Neal I worry about is his range. He does struggle with range, but he's got... Sh- Neal's got a long range as well. He's got he's a rangy fighter as well. He's got long arms while having muscular arms. Where Magni's a stick and just has stick arms and can poke at you. Jeff can catch him, I think, with a hook or something. As Neil Mag- as Gary's trying to, like... I can catch him. I can see him landing, like, a 1-2. Like a, like a right hook misses, one, two. Gary gets dropped and put out. I think he can win this. I don't think Gary out-wrestles him. Or out-grapples him in any way. I, don't, I think Gary's going to have to. Uh, Gary can KO Neil. But when has Neil been rocked? Shavcat Rackman I'll be lost too, but he looked so good in that fight. Was losing to Shavcat though. You know? Shavcat's good. Shavcat's better than Neil Gary in my opinion. And he made that fight really competitive. And Shavkat's got a solid chin. Gary got dropped by Song Kanan. I know he admits he made a mistake there. But still. He got dropped by Song fucking Kanan. End of story. And Jeff Neal's a top contender. And he looked great against Luke K. Shut up against Luke K, unlike Gary's bitch ass. I got Jeff Neal. I think he's going to go out there and get the KO. Really, really, in a spectacular fashion and put away Ian Gary and make a hype train for himself next. I got Jack Neal. I think he gets it done. I think he can do this. I think he can do this. We move on. Up the card. Robert Whitaker versus Paulo Costa. I'm going to go with Robert Whitaker. I like Paulo Costa, man. And I, 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 I respect him for actually showing up this time. If he does, I'm not going to jinx it yet. I like Robert Whitaker here, though. I think he gets it done. I think he does. I think he gets it done over Paulo Costa. I think he gets it done. I think he does. Costa has been out for so long. And it's not like Costa's this monster. Like, it's not like Tremayev if he... Like, he's just left and came back and he's still a monster. Costa is slowly not caring anymore about the sport. Ever since Izzy beat him, he just hasn't cared. Was supposed to fight Whitaker, pulled out against Whitaker. Was supposed to fight Cannoneer, pulled out against Cannoneer. Fights, fights Marvin Vittori. Tries cheating his way to get the fight cancelled. But it's Vittori, they make it at 205. Vittori is fine with that. Vittori is a savage, was like, no, no, you're going to fight me, Paulo Costa. And there you go. He has to fight Vittori, loses to Marvin Vittori while cheating. Because, of course, I know that's a bad matchup for him because Costa can't KO Vittori or doesn't have any KO power at all. So he loses to Vittori in a striking only fight. Well, he looks actually pretty good in that fight, but still, I, I just don't see him winning in the feet skill-wise versus Whitaker. 
I don't think he's got the power to pull away with a curry. He dropped Romero with a put perfect hook. And Romero kind of just went into it and got caught by Costa. And Costa still arguably should have lost that fight. You know? And then we look at the freaking Rockhold fights. Luke Rockhold gets outclassed there. No, no, he didn't get outclassed. He beat Rockhold, but looked really bad against an old Rockhold. He should have KO'd. Done, it's over. Costa wins easily without a scratch. Tough fight for him. Rockhold could win round two. I don't think I don't think he wins against Whitaker. Whitaker lost to Drickus to Plessy, the middleweight champion of the world. In a, in a few little people's eyes, but still. Drickus is the champion of the world, whether you like it or not. And if you don't think he's the champ, you think Strickland's still champ. He's still the number one contender. Better than Adesanya. So yeah, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Whitaker. I think he's got himself a free win here. If Whitaker loses this, I I will be really confused because this is a free win for him. Cost is a free win at this point. Doesn't care. Is forced to show up now, in my opinion. He really is. He's forced to show up now. Cause the UFC are like, okay, one last chance, Costa. Or it's over for you. I gotta go Whitaker. We move on up the card. Alexander Volkanovsky versus Ilya Tapuria. I'm gonna go for Ilya Tapuria over Volk. I think this is the end of Volkanovsky. I think this is the end. I like Ilya Tapuria. But one thing I've noticed, man, is he's in Volk's head. He is. And I know Volk might be chill about it. Yeah, it's just a clown. But all McGreg, this is Ronnie and McGregor all though, and I think it's gonna be like it as well. I think Volk's gonna get caught in the first round. And Volk saying he's gonna finish him in round two, or just beat him up badly in round two. I think he wants to just put Ilya away early, not clown with him, not just toy with him, chop his legs. I think he's gonna try striking with Ilya in the pocket, and getting caught and put out. I think this is a terrible idea for Volk. I think he should go to his regular chop of the legs, be skilled, watch out for each punch, counter Ilya with the boxing, but it's not going to happen. He's going to get clipped early and put out. I think Ilya wins. I think he's going to put away Volk. I like Volkanovski, but you just got KO'd four months ago, and I know that's, that's a big part, man, health-wise. Not even confidence-wise, yeah, yeah, this... But I think health-wise, like, it's not good for him just to get KO'd four months ago. Concussed badly with a head kick by Makashev. And now he's turning around four months later to face Ilya. Ilya's confident more than ever. I know he's facing guys like Josh Emmett, but it's not who he's beating, man. Make it look easy against Emmett as well. That's really impressive on how he did it. Like, yeah, you're... Had a great performance against Emmett as well and finished Emmett with a triangle. But, you know, he got caught here and there. Yair didn't look great. Ilya fucking won every round against Emmett. Maybe one can go Emmett's way, but I don't even... Maybe the fifth round can go Emmett because Emmett was still in there. Props to Emmett, man. Really good for him. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, Ilya dominated that fight. I think Ilya's going to win here. I think there's a time where the champion loses. And I think Ilya, Volk can grapple. But Ilya's strong. Has busy JJ off his back. I know Ortega does as well, but Ortega is soy. Ilya's a Chad. I gotta go Ilya Tapiria. I think he gets it done. First round KO makes it look easy, to be honest with you. A lot of people are picking Volk. I think they're just a big fan of Volk and they just don't like Ilya's shit talk on him. That's what I think. But if you're actually picking Volk, I respect you. But I think he's going to get caught and put out. Volk doesn't have the best of chins. Yeah, this is like the Ian Gary Jeff Neal thing. You know, like, like, Gary might be better at range and shit. But will he get caught? I think he'll eventually get caught in the chin. And I think this is going to be the same thing here and there. So I'm going to go Ilya. Like, subscribe, thank you for watching. And the UFC want him to win. So if it's any close, Volk. Listen, if you're somehow watching this, Volk, either finish your Leo, which I don't think he will. I really don't think he will. So he's going to have to style a domination on Ilya. 
Because if this is any way close, you're going to get robbed, Volk. Just going to say how it is. So get a 49-46 or a 50-45 decision. Or, yeah, maybe even more dominant. Who knows? Don't think he wins, though. Like, subscribe, thank you for watching. Peace.